And we identified 1,200 schools in the province. Altogether in Gauteng, we've got 2,300 public schools, 2,000 what we call ordinary public schools, 300 schools that would be um, special schools or schools offering different types of curriculum offerings. And we said, let's target 1,200 schools. And these schools were 400 high schools, 800 primary schools, and it was all the schools at that point that did not meet the targets that were in the performance agreement that I had to sign with the national minister. And those targets were that we had to get um, an 80% matric pass rate in this province. We had to get, um, I think it was a 60% pass rate in physical science and mathematics. Uh, we had to get um, a certain percentage of learners at grades three, six, and nine to pass the annual national assessment tests. So we took all of those schools, and then we added all schools that were no fee schools in the province. Because we said right from the start, unless we're going to turn around the schools where the poorest learners in this province go, then there's no point in the work that we, that we are doing. Because at the end of the day, the purpose of a public education system is it must be able to compensate for family background. It must be able to give those who come from the poorest <coughs> communities a better chance. So we developed a whole range of strategies. But all of these strategies had things in common. The first thing is that they focused on improving the quality of teaching. 75% of the education budget is still spent on educator salaries. Educators are the biggest input into the system. Unless you improve the quality of teaching, you're not going to go anywhere. So in terms of the later discussion, what do we think that business should do? You can never go wrong if you contribute towards improving the quality of teaching. It is still the biggest input. Secondly, obviously, there's the question of improving the quality of school management and in particular equipping managers to manage and track the rollout of the curriculum. Because the main purpose of education is to receive the curriculum. There are many other things that are also important, but if you are failing to teach the three R's in primary school, if you are failing to cover the curriculum in high schools, then you're failing with the basic purpose of education. Third area is working directly with learners and improving le learner achievement. And I was saying yesterday at a conference that I was speaking at that if I have one regret about the last five years, it's that I regret that we didn't do more with learners themselves, particularly high school learners. Because I think that there's an enormous amount of work that can be done if we motivate young people to see there is a way out of poverty, there is a way out of the circumstances in which they find themselves. So that would be the third area, teacher improvement, management improvement, and learner motivation would be a third area that I would say any uh, business initiative that, that looked at those three areas would be very important. Um, Standardized testing, you know the National Minister has introduced the ANA tests. Obviously, we've always had the matric tests. It's very important, those ANA tests, because prior to 2008, when they first begin, began to introduce the ANA tests, there was no systematic way of testing the schooling system independent of what schools did themselves, and other than matric. And, of course, everybody needs the piece of paper to leave. But if you don't test earlier on, how do you diagnose? So this introduction by our National Minister of the ANA tests, it's a very, very significant introduction. And it's something which, in years to come, you will see increasingly, increasing benefits because it allows us to test the system and to remediate before matric, at which stage it's obviously too late. And then lastly, the whole area of parental support.